Welcome back to The Stars Made Me Do It. Oh my god, it's it's the first episode of the new year. It <gasps> is. Oh my, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording this in 2020 still, but like whenever this reaches anybody else's ears, happy freaking new year. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I just read a thing this morning. It was like a stupid little ad on Facebook that, that said, um, all these predictions that Nostradamus made oh for my 2021. God. I literally read and the it, same thing. Yeah, and it was like zombies, zombies, yeah. and plagues, and earthquakes, and, and like all this bad, yeah, famine, and um, a lot of bad stuff. And I'm like, oh well, that's a bummer. And then, and then I'm googling like, how often was Nostradamus right? And <laughs> <laughs> what did he predict correctly? Because I can't have him ruining this year. <laughs> Not oh again. my god, I have I have canceled my <laughs> wedding once. <laughs> I'm not doing yeah. it again. And and you know the the skeptics were saying like he's really super vague w- yeah. with his predictions, and you can like take them as you want. So when it when it does line up, it's like oh he said that, and when it doesn't line up, it's like oh well he meant it on a smaller scale or like you know so. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, happy New Year. Happy New Year. And new year new zodiac season happy capricorn season yes get your life in order season get your life in not order not even season. get your life in order no Attack that's more those projects yeah be ambitious season yeah i would say virgo seasons get your life in order yeah. and capricorn season is like get going take charge yeah mm. yeah um so we're gonna talk all about capricorns and we're also going to try to change up some of our interviews coming up to shake things up a little bit and uh we also have some we have some really fun capricorn interviews planned so that's going to be coming up and also well we'll talk about our other capricorn episode in a little while Mm -hmm. it is capricorn season and capricorns fucking take charge so why don't we start talking about our awesome capricorn zodiac pals all right they are earth signs mutable and feminine they are not actually let's do that again you're right they're not are they feminine though they are feminine uh-huh, right uh-huh. which is weird because they're known as like okay here let's go again <laughs> they are earth signs <laughs> cardinal and feminine which is weird because they're also known as the dad of the zodiac yeah yeah, but Capricorn's known as the feminine. dad of the zodiac. Cancer's known as the mom, but Earth and Water signs are feminine. But mm-hmm. I guess it goes to show you that everybody needs to be in touch with emotions because both moms and dads <laughs> need to be in touch with emotions. I guess so. But yeah, yeah they it's are better if they are. Yeah, they are definitely seen as the dad of the zodiac because they just like uh, this is stereotyping, but they're just like the person who just gets shit done. And I feel and like takes care of things, and I feel like mm-hmm. you know, pr- like past gender roles see the dad as being the one who keeps everything together, is the financial like not just provider, but um, like deals with all of the things that are in the financial stability world, keeps things running, and um, mm-hmm. and I mean, growing up, my dad is a Capricorn. Both my parents are Capricorns, but growing up. I did feel that that was my dad's role, but that's just because my dad's a Capricorn, oh, not necessarily. Well, no, but same here. My, <laughs> my dad's a Sagittarius, and he he well, he played that role of dealing with the the finances and everything. And but it doesn't have to be yeah like the dad of the zodiac. Let's say like you I could be a girl and be into finance, obviously. Yeah, I we had me and Gim had and an awesome role reversal moment of like defying stereotypes when we had first moved into this apartment. And I was like in the living room, like surrounded by all the Ikea things. And I was building like our entire living room I built, like our entire living room. And Kim was like wearing um, my, uh, well, it's now his, um, what's it called? Apron. <laughs> it's like lace <laughs> all on it. <laughs> He's wearing the apron, cooking in the kitchen and like pops in. And I was like, look at us defying gender stereotypes, you cooking <laughs> and me building shit. So, but um but yeah, so seen as the dad of the zodiac, very um, dependable, very reliable. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
So speaking of dependable and reliable, shall we go into some positive traits? Yes. You want to tell me about them? Sure. Um, Positive traits. They are wise, respectful, realistic, hardworking, organized, patient, ambitious, business-oriented, self-disciplined, practical, reliable, and methodical. Yeah. I feel like a lot of these are like synonyms of each other. They but are. Yes. Yeah. Very self-disciplined. Very. Yeah. They tend to be business oriented. I mean, between my two parents who are both Capricorns, my mom's not very business oriented. But I think it's more of like, not that she, I think she'd be very capable. I just think it doesn't interest her. Um, mm-hmm. But my dad's the most business oriented person that there could possibly ever be in the world. Like. Mm-hmm. very business oriented like that's that's just how his brain works yes he like always looks at the business aspect yes. of like anything it's very yeah it's wild like even if it's i don't mm-hmm. know nothing business related he'll look at it as if it's a business even like mm-hmm. a text from him like or an email from him <laughs> that is not business related it's like dad it's it's me it's not it's not one of like <laughs> your clients it's me <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um i do think they're very wise um mm-hmm. what were we saying in like the love actually episode mr bean being a a wise capricorn but like a wacky wise capricorn mm-hmm. um i'm just thinking about the capricorns that i know like i feel like like respectful in a way where almost like they're just presence kind of de- demands respect you know like mm. maybe not mm-hmm. even their presence but like for someone who has all of these qualities, someone who's really hardworking and organized and patient and ambitious and practical and reliable, they automatically become, like, I feel like they, they are respectful by nature, but they're also someone who you then respect because of the way they are. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But on the flip side of that, shall we go into some negative traits? Um, negative traits, they are cynical, selfish, unforgiving, manipulative, egotistical, plodding, but what does plodding mean exactly? We were looking that up before we (laughs) recorded and then got sidetracked. (laughs) We'll get back to plodding. Loners, pessimistic, cautious, 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 cheap, and rarely satisfied. Go on, sing it. He will never be satisfied. (laughs) We'll talk about someone famous who's a Capricorn in a minute. Um, (laughs) Tell me your thoughts on these negative traits for the Capricorns that you know. Um, Well, we did do one of our... um, We already did one of our Capricorn interviews, and she was talking about being manipulative um, but seeing it as a, as a compliment yeah. when someone says she's manipulative, yeah. which, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is funny. But why not? Yeah, we'll let her explain that next episode. Um, I'm looking up plotting right now because, unf- yeah, slow moving and unexciting. Yeah, like kind of. That's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Kind of how what we were talking about in the Love Actually episode, where I was like very rudely saying that Capricorns are seen as being boring, and I feel like that's when they're just like. Capricorns always have a goal and they're always working Mm -hmm. on achieving that goal. Like always. Every Capricorn Mm -hmm. has a goal and it doesn't have to be a huge mind blowing like take over the world goal, but whatever it is, they constantly have a goal. And for any any, uh, Rachel Hollis fans out there, I remember watching one of her videos. She's a Capricorn. Awesome. Uh, Like motivational person and she was saying something about how she I realized after this that she was a Capricorn but she's like I did I had no idea that not everybody constantly had a goal working to achieve I thought that was what everybody was like I had no idea (laughs) that it was just how I was (laughs) and -hmm. and that was mind-blowing to me when I learned that not every single person in my life was working towards a goal at every minute like I was but um but I mean that's totally can be a positive thing but at the same time the the plodding thing makes me think of like you know unexcitement in a way because it's like I'm just gonna keep doing this and I'm just gonna keep going and just working towards this and here we go and it's like Mm -hmm. it's not a negative thing 
But at the same time, maybe it's not seen as like an exciting quality, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that like the negative traits can, well, obviously we know by now that the negative traits are more unevolved traits, but like, like selfish, like my parents are the least selfish people I can think of, but I'm also thinking about like how they've evolved over time. And I, I do think that Capricorns are like, I'm going to look out for me because I'm the only one who like is capable here. So I'm going to worry about Mm me and make sure that I'm okay. Um, which again, not necessarily a negative trait, but maybe by someone in a Capricorn's life could see it as being selfish, where it's like, how mm-hmm. about you, you like to worry about you and I'll worry about me <laughs> kind of a yeah. kind of mentality. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so the the thing that we wanted to talk about too is how the negative traits and the positive traits are like on the flip side they go hand in hand yeah and yeah and if you're just really extreme with one it becomes a negative yeah and i think we've like we've really seen that with all of the other signs we've talked about where i feel like i, mm-hmm. I noticed it most with scorpio where it was like all of the traits of a scorpio that we talked about it was like both <laughs> could be really positive or really negative but it was still the same trait like Mm -hmm. you know like being like so thrown into something and so focused on something can be such a good trait or such a negative trait or like caring so much it's like it could become smothering or it could become like your most loving friend that you have you know like it's uh, Mm -hmm. it's the same quality but on the flip side so for the the qualities for a capricorn um main thing that you think of when you think of a capricorn is ambitious they are the most ambitious zodiac sign 100 percent so that is seen as a positive trait but that on the negative side of that we see workaholic like someone who literally throws himself into their work and they can't stop and that's all they do and um you know it's it's being ambitious but when you're a workaholic and you can't enjoy the other things then it's negative. you're ambitious to a fault yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. do you want to do yeah. so all of these are yes to a fault let's say so if you're persistent that's good but persistent to a fault you become relentless yeah and that's not good exactly and then yeah. um a positive trait being realistic like a capricorn will give you like the the tr- not i don't want to say like the truth but like they will be real with you they will be realistic with you they will be frank with you but which mm-hmm. i i appreciate uh, as my cap moon self i totally appreciate the realistic part where it's like I, I'm a positive person by nature, but I also don't like, I would rather have the reality as well, but mm-hmm. realistic and borderline and become a negative trait into pessimistic. So instead mm-hmm. of being like, you know, we are not going to get, we're not going to have enough time to do this, realistic, being like, we are never going to finish this project. There's not enough time. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like there's a difference between being like, we don't have enough time today. We have to move stuff around to get it done. And, this mm-hmm. is never going to happen. We can never meet our goals, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. I think with that one, um, thinking about how your dad is, um, I don't see him as a pessimistic person, but he's super realistic that he'll see the worst case scenario that could happen. Yeah. Um, and wants to consider that like always not, I get. I would say in, in business, that's, yeah. that's, where I mean, he kind of has to do that for what his job is. But um, like, I'm always like, well, let's be optimistic and hope for the best. And and he's like, but this could happen, so we need to be prepared for that. Yeah, and he's not he's not saying it in a way that he thinks it's going to happen, but mm-hmm. it is a possibility. It therefore, it needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're totally right. But then there are right? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah this, you're totally right. And there's that like that flip side. I feel like my mom does that too. My mom's like, but it's more like, uh, I think she brings it up as a means of being positive. My mom does it in a way where she's like, okay, worst case scenario, you miss your flight, but Mm -hmm. you have family here. You stay another night and you catch a flight tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like, and she, Mm -hmm. she kind of does that. She actually, yeah, she does that a lot where she will give me the worst case scenario in a, in a way to be like, look, this is the worst that can happen. And it probably won't. Mm -hmm. So let's, mm-hmm. you know, let's think better than that. And if, and if the worst does happen, 
we'll figure out a way to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. practical. Mm-hmm. Very practical. Um, yeah. I'm going to go to practical now since I just said that because that's one of our, mm-hmm. <laughs> one of our qualities is practical. Yes. Um, Capricorns are exceptionally practical people um, as we just gave all those examples. But um, on the flip side of that, it could become very dry. Like I don't feel like either of my parents have it to the point of becoming dry, but a Capricorn that's like being so practical it, without any sort of like, I don't know, maybe just removing emotion from it or just uh they they can they can be dry i don't know i don't know how else to say that Mm -hmm. yeah and then we have sensitive um which can be good but can lead to them being too touchy yeah so like it's good that a capricorn like like we said they're one of the feminine signs they are in touch with their emotions more so than the masculine signs they're um but it if they i guess like you know being in touch with your emotions, being sensitive is a good thing, but then being like super, like I could just see, I'm, and I'm thinking about myself too. I can totally be touchy and, and sensitive when like it comes to emotions because I, I feel like uh, maybe hurt too easily because I can be sensitive about something when it comes to something emotional where it's like, you know, you know, you didn't mean to hurt my feelings, but you did hurt my feelings and that hurt. And like, and instead of just being like, noting it and feeling it and moving past it i can definitely get to the point of being like a little bit touchy with that um so it's good to be sensitive but maybe also sensible (laughs) Mm. (laughs) sense and and sensitivity sense and sensitivity (laughs) oh my god (laughs) (laughs) can't wait for another jane austen episode (laughs) yes and our last one uh disciplined but you could be a little too uptight if you're too disciplined. Which I definitely think is what Capricorns get a bad rap for, too. Like, just being mm-hmm. way too... Being too square. They're not cool enough. They're so, like, disciplined and, like, being seen as uptight. And I definitely feel that a little bit with my Capricorn moon, where I'm such a freaking rule follower. Like, I... But then my Sagittarius side comes in. It's like, but if the rule is stupid, we don't like it. We don't follow it. But it's like Mm. my Capricorn (laughs) self is like, but these are the rules. Therefore, we should follow the rules because rules are there for a reason. And um, yeah, but then if you get too uptight and you can't let loose, then it's like, I think I think Capricorns that are too uptight just like miss out on a lot of fun things. I think if if the, the Capricorns that, you know, focus on the positive qualities and are more evolved and are more like in tune with them like themselves and their their emotions and their i don't know the way that they function i think they could be some of the funniest like fun loving people that i know but i think the ones that get a little bit too um i think the like the stereotypical capricorn that some people think of is like the work 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 nothing more um mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Those are our qualities of kind of the flip side of the positive and negatives that work with each other. Mm Mm-hmm. So boy versus girl Capricorns. I don't know that I really, like, I feel like boy, girl, Leos, there's a big difference. Yeah. Um, Certain signs, it feels like there's a big difference between the two, but. Capricorns, I don't know. I don't I don't think so so much. Yeah. I I feel it more even with Sagittarius, boy and girl Sagittarius, I feel a difference a lot more than mm-hmm. with boy and girl Capricorns. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, I all of the Capricorns that I know are like the most they're just so self sufficient. They're yeah. like I do think though, now that I'm like thinking about it, the boy Capricorns that I know are very like they are very into business where the girl Capricorns that I know use the qualities that one would use in business for a different profession. Mm -hmm. I think that that's what it is. Like we, uh, one of Guillaume's best friends is a Capricorn. And when we're playing Monopoly, which is already not something I enjoy very much, he literally got out his Excel spreadsheet to keep track of like the money and everything. And I was just like, is this real life? (laughs) Uh, so, <laughs> I had 
never played Monopoly until like three nights ago. Oh my god. Um, yeah, and I, I played it with uh, Dan and his parents, and I enjoyed it. But um, I can like I I feel like a Capricorn would really enjoy yeah Monopoly yeah <laughs> right I was thinking about when I was an au pair <laughs> and the oldest kid was a Capricorn and mm-hmm. at any chance any chance we got like it was the kid Monopoly so I was fine with it because it like goes much faster <laughs> but um and he was he was relentless in the way where. He, he was the oldest and he had two younger brothers <laughs> and like mm-hmm. if they made one mistake he's like you lost it's mine my money you know <laughs> <laughs> and he loved it so much it's really funny yeah um any other capricorns out there are you a monopoly fan mm, yeah let us know yeah oh you know what they should do you ever see like you know which which thing are you based on your zodiac sign it should be like which board game are you based oh, on my your god. zodiac sign oh my god I'm totally like I'm I'm like one of the charades ones. Like heads up, <laughs> heads up, you know, or you have to like describe something. Um yeah. whatever it says like, "Oh, me and you were so good at that." When um what was the movie? Um it was Steel Magnolias, and I'd never even <laughs> seen Steel Magnolias. And we're like, "Oh, ladies." <laughs> Steel Magnolia. <laughs> And you did another yeah. one. You were like frolicking with canines. I'm like dances with wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I would be that, but yes, um, it's a good one. I think I that don't know what I would be. <laughs> you'd be that that oh that drawing game that you pass it. You draw something. Oh, Pictionary. Oh, or oh, Pictionary. Scri- I love Pictionary, but um, Scribblish. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Where you you get something, you have to draw it, and then you pass the drawing to the next person, and they have to write down what you what they thought you drew. Yeah. And then they pass that sentence to the next person, and that person has it's like telephone but with drawing. Yes, I played that That's recently here, and mm-hmm. it was like there wasn't enough like things for us all to do one. So me and Guillaume were on a team, and like I was mm-hmm. I was literally crying laughing mm-hmm. like. <laughs> trying to draw this stuff oh yeah that's a good one but rounding back monopoly (laughs) (laughs) monopoly would be the capricorn game i'm totally gonna do a poll to see if people agree um yeah but yeah excel spreadsheets capricorns most of them love excel spreadsheets um that kind of organizational life um, my dad knows all those shortcuts. He's just like clicking in all the random things into, and it's mm-hmm. like suddenly we have a total of columns like A fifteen and G. I don't know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, but boy versus girl, that's I think the only real difference. Like I just see them as totally like exceptionally capable people that like do not need anybody. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, obviously everybody needs people, but like they can, they can handle things on their own and they can handle them well, very capable. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't see much of a difference between boy and girl in this case. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I know a good amount of Capricorns and I don't, I don't really, um, I think that it depends on all of their other signs if they open Mm -hmm. up or not. Because Capricorns are also types of people who, like, you don't get to know the real them right away, typically. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think it's almost like from that practical standpoint, it's like, are you worth opening up to right now? Should you, is it going to be worth my time to get to know you? Is this going to be, like, worth it? And if it is, then yeah, I'm going to open up and and things will be great. And I think that... um, from a Capricorn moon people out there too, the really like when it comes to emotions and feeling like, you know, more guarded with emotions and not wanting to open up right away because it's like, is it worth the risk? Like taking everything into consideration and being practical about it. And like, almost like the practical part is like, yes, it is worth putting down these walls because if I don't, then nothing can get in the good or the bad. Um, yeah. But um, and also, I think that, like, what we talked about 
with like just the crazy Sagittarius tendencies. Um, if you have a crazy zodiac tendency, you know, whatever like your sign may be, but then you have a Capricorn moon like I do, you're going to be grounded. You're, it's going to ground you like Capricorns are grounded. And if you have Capricorn placements, it's going to be the ones that ground you. Um, a lot of mm-hmm. our generation have Capricorn placements because I, what is it? Saturn and Saturn and something else. I think Saturn and Uranus are your anus is in set um is in capricorn um which is kind of like Mm -hmm. a generational thing but um yes your capricorn placements will be the ones that will make you ambitious will help you stay grounded i don't know keeps you like realistic which Mm -hmm. can be also the same thing as grounded yeah yeah shall we talk about some famous caps yes let's do you want to go back and forth can you handle it I, I honestly like I will try my best. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna like click on each one <laughs> so that I can keep track. <laughs> okay, you start. Okay. All right, we have Michelle Obama, Kate Middleton, uh, Martin Luther King, John Legend, Lin Manuel Miranda. For those of you who don't know, Lin Manuel Miranda wrote Hamilton and starred as Hamilton. I really like him. I and do too. He's a Capricorn. Yes, and we'll talk about why that's so exciting in a minute. Um <laughs> <laughs> Dolly Parton. Ricky Martin. Zoe De Chanel. Kinda rhyme. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> Dolly Parton, Ricky Martin. <laughs> Zoe De Chanel is a triple Capricorn. So mm. she's one of the rare triples that we not that we know personally but isn't it weird that um this is just a silly i already know what you're gonna people say say zoe de chanel and katie Katie perry Perry look alike and they're Mm -hmm. both what did i say did i not say katie perry yeah no i was just i already knew what you're gonna say (laughs) (laughs) yeah they look alike and they're both uh triple triple top three yeah Katy Perry. Katy Perry's a triple Scorpio. In case you missed Scorpio episode. Yep. Yes. Uh, moving on. Bradley Cooper. I have no idea who this next person is. Um, Zayn Malik. Who's that? Zane, uh, yeah, from uh, from One Direction. Oh my God! I'm just remembering. Very, very up to date on my One Direction. I'm not. I just I know that he's in One Direction. <laughs> when I taught second grade. It was when, like, One Direction was in its heyday, like, like really. Mm-hmm. And I was so upset at something because my students, like, didn't do, like, something. Or maybe it was just one that didn't. And I was like, guys, I gave you One Direction. And then one of my crazy boys was like, One Direction! <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I can't. Oh, my God. Okay. Moving uh, on. Um, J.R. Tolkien. Yes, when Tolkien. How do you say his name? How do you say his last name? Tolkien. 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 I, thought, I always thought it was Tolkien. Tolkien. But now that I'm seeing it like spelled out, chances okay. of me having Tolkien. misspelled it, being the realistic Capricorn moon that I am, <laughs> um, medium. But um, J.R.R. Mm. Tolkien, when um, uh, right before the world shut down, me and Guillaume went to um, uh, the J.R.R. Tolkien exhibit in Paris, and they had like mm. all of his like drawings and the whole story of how he like first started writing it and all of these things and I was like when is his birthday I want to know like what his sign is and um being Capricorn I was just like everything's so earthy and it's so like <laughs> I don't know and the whole way that he created a language he created these languages and I mm-hmm. was just thinking about my mom and how that's like my mom loves decoding shit and language things and like just i don't know like putting in like an effort and like accomplishing something so i just thought that was really cool for like what a cool capricorn i love lord yeah. makes everything that'll be an episode too okay <laughs> um yes. Ooh, and speaking yes, of uh that. speaking of uh Gerald tolkien a great star in lord of the rings orlando bloom would be mm-hmm. a Capricorn as well. <laughs> um, we have Betty White, James Earl Jones, Denzel Washington, Elvis, Elvis, 
What's Elvis's last name? Presley. Oh my god. <laughs> right? I know. I'm like I know that. Why did why could I not think of that for a second? <laughs> um Sir Isaac Newton. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin's one of like my top people. Yeah. I love Benjamin Franklin. I always chose him to do any sort of project on. Me too. I I just really love Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. Remember that one? Too. Remember that minute there where I had bifocal glasses in like third grade? <laughs> I remember being like Benjamin Franklin invented bifocals. I had a lot of eye problems as a kid. All right. And there was Do you a not there. need bifocals anymore? No. I guess you don't. <laughs> Why did you need them for a second? <laughs> You grew out of that? I grew out of bifocals. <laughs> People normally grow into bifocals. Because I had so many eye problems as a kid. My eyes didn't used to focus. Like, I used to see double when I read. So then they thought that it was my nearsightedness that needed to be fixed. But, mm-hmm. or not my nearsightedness, but that would make me farsighted, whatever. They thought it was my up-close reading that needed a mm-hmm. prescription. But in fact, my eyes weren't focusing together. So I had to go to vision therapy and make my eyes like practice focusing together. And once they were both looking at the same thing, I could see perfectly fine up close. It was distance. That was the actual problem. So then I, um, yeah, I, I don't think I ever, I don't think it was something I grew out of. I think it was a misdiagnosed solution <laughs> for what I <laughs> gotcha. You were misdiagnosed with bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> i remember it was in third grade and i did a project on ben franklin in third grade and i was like i have bifocals people who are like <laughs> 60 70 have bifocals oh my god well i experienced that as an eight-year-old anyway <laughs> ben franklin fucking awesome yes and the next um, one is alexander hamilton his name is alexander hamilton <laughs> and there's a million things he hasn't done. Just you wait, because we are doing... Just you wait. An Alexander Hamilton episode in celebration of Capricorn season. So It's coming, because he's, he's a Capricorn, and Lin-Manuel Miranda's a Capricorn, so what better way to celebrate Capricorn season? A Capricorn who researched a Capricorn and played that Capricorn. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's going to be good. So um, we Just will you save... Wait just you wait we will save all the epicness that is alexander hamilton and lin manuel miranda for <laughs> for our hamilton episode say lin manuel miranda really fast <laughs> i feel like i have to over enunciate every time i say his name i have to like lin manuel yes. miranda you know yes you can see my yeah, it's face not right now. it's yeah. not an easy name to say it's not um okay uh we have liam hemsworth is he the one who is engaged slash married slash i don't know to miley or is that another hemsworth yeah i think that's miley uh maybe husband on and off fiance i think they got married they got married know. but i think they split up or i think they got engaged and then split up and then got engaged again and then got married yeah and then I think this. I don't up. know. We gotta. I don't care. Okay, Sienna Miller, <laughs> <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, Chalamet, uh, Chalamet, 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 Timothy, Timothy, Timothy Chalamet. Il est français. Um, yeah, he's the one who's mm. in Little Women. Yes. Um, Edgar Allan Poe, Jim Carrey, David Bowie. And Dax Shepard. We were talking about how, like, with, you know, Jim Carrey and Dax Shepard, how Capricorns can be seen as being really, like, you know, like, let's get down to business and, um, you know, let's uh, just focus, focus, focus. Whereas they they get overlooked for being some of, like, the most hilarious people, too. Like, mm-hmm. Jim Carrey. You can be super it, focused and down to business, but you could be hysterical, too. Yes. Yes, and like mm-hmm. I'm just thinking like about the the I like I love Dak Shepard's character in that stupid movie with Dane Cook. What was it? Oh, Employee <laughs> of the Month. This is an '87 Honda. How dare you? You know, like that was. Oh my God, I loved like he plays such a stupid character, and it's like he does it so well, and 
Mm-hmm. He, he's married to what? Kristen Bell? And they like put yes, out. Yes, and I think the she's funniest. a cancer. Is she? Hang on. I think so, which would make them the mom and dad of the Zodiac. I love, like, they just, some hysterical stuff. They put out hysterical videos and. Yes, yeah, she is July 18th. That's so funny. Yeah, so they're the mom and dad of the Zodiac. They're the comedy mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah, I like them a lot. Me too. But yeah, so Capricorns can be super like, you know, ambitious like Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, Isaac Newton type of people. But then you have like, I don't know, like Bradley Cooper, um, uh, what did we say, Dak Shepard? There was someone else who I forgot to put on the list. But in, like, there's some really funny Capricorn actors and mm-hmm. comedians and things. And one thing that I I did notice, um, Zoe Deschanel, who's a triple Capricorn, she I follow her on Instagram. I love her. She's um new girl. There was like she has been putting out like all this stuff about being like about growing your own food and your own vegetables and everything. And everything that she does, I feel like is so earthy. And that's just a reminder of like Capricorns being earth signs. And um uh, since we're going to talk about our relationships with Capricorns next, I was realizing when I was home and at my parents' house how fucking obvious it is that they are earth signs because like our entire home is wood and like and stone and even like all of the mugs and bowls and plates are like made of like I don't even know like how you would like pottery like clay things you know like very Mm. like gritty like um not like gritty dirty gritty like um like you can tell that someone made this mug on a what's it called what's it called the thing that spins like a pottery wheel yeah mm-hmm. and i just think it's so funny like they have a huge stone fireplace they like are surrounded by woods they have the plants like, everywhere plants your mom's plants everywhere. all over the house <laughs> we have like plant rotation days where it's like okay it's it's getting colder now we have to i remember as a kid we had like in summertime all the plants were in front of the fireplace everywhere And then as it got colder, we had to find them new homes throughout the house because we were going to be using the fireplace. And they're like, not just like an aloe plant here and there, like an aloe plant that once was an aloe plant that is now like the size of a prehistoric, like monstrous. Like, I mean, it takes over whatever space it's in. Like she is just such a plant Mm -hmm. whisperer. Like my mom used to like rescue like dying plants and bring them back to life. And, and meanwhile, I was probably be the person who would like throw a plant away and be like, I tried, you know, but she, (laughs) she would bring it back to life. I'm trying, I'm trying to be better with plants, but I think it's like fun to take note. Like we've talked about with elements before, if you know some Capricorns or know some earthy people, like are they, are they plant whisperers? Do they have a lot of, you know, I don't know, like uh, earthy things around them. I just realized how obvious it was. And I thought it was cool that like growing up, like one of my, I don't know, classic, not even childhood memories still to this day thing we do is have we have campfires all the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is the perfect melding of my element and my parents' elements, like wood and fire. <laughs> and that was mm-hmm. like our, you know, bringing us together always, like having campfires my whole life. Um, but all of that is to say that I have a very good relationship with Capricorns. Mm-hmm. And I think I think Capricorns are pretty easy to have good relationships with. Typically, yes. Like, I, uh, I agree. I feel like they're in... Maybe I'm biased, but I feel like they're just a rather inoffensive sign. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like everybody is always hating on Geminis and Scorpios, but I feel like Geminis and Scorpios have, like, really... Um, uh, not like distinct personality traits but their personality traits can be like more um either you really vibe with them or you really don't whereas mm-hmm. capricorns are kind of like i feel like it's seen as meh but in a good way where it's like you know yeah. they're they're not really um clashing with anybody um unoffensive for the most part yeah and mm-hmm. yeah i'm just thinking my my father-in-law's a Capricorn, my brother-in-law's a Capricorn, mm-hmm. my, both my parents are Capricorns. Um, I have a good amount of Capricorn friends, but I think, I don't know, I think that it's because of Capricorns being Capricorns, and I think my Capricorn moon makes me, like, I connect a lot with their qualities, and I appreciate their ambition, and also, like, um, like their structure. Uh, like, I need my freedom, but like we were talking about in Sagittarius season, like there is freedom and structure sometimes. So I do appreciate like there's a goal and a plan 
and I know what I have to do when, and then I can do my own thing the other time, kind of thing. So yes, I don't know. What about you and your Capricorn relationships? I'm fine with them. <laughs> <laughs> Done. All right. Thanks for listening. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I am. I really, I, I don't think I've ever had, like, an issue with a Capricorn. They're, I mean, probably the closest Capricorns I know that uh, would be your mom and dad. Um, yeah. And I love them. They're wonderful. So. So no issues there, but maybe not a lot of other Capricorns, But I'm not really you know? close with, no, there's no other Capricorns that I'm, like, close with, yeah. Are there any other Capricorns in our family? Mm, no. Michelle. Oh, Michelle. I, yeah, our mom's cousin, mm-hmm. who has listened to a couple episodes. So, hey, Michelle, if you ever listen to this Has one. she? <laughs> hey. um, Hello. <laughs> um, Michelle and my mom are so funny because they really are the same. And mm-hmm. they love words with friends so much. And they play all day long, every day. And mm-hmm. like between life, whenever they have a moment, they're just like going back and forth with words with friends. And then when they're together, they will play words with friends in the same room. And I feel like that's a very like I don't know, with each other. Yes, but like, <laughs> but like I'm like, why don't we get out the Scrabble board? Why don't we like you know <laughs> get some sort of interaction? And they're like, well, it's better on the phones, and we both have a game going already, so we'll just continue <laughs> it. And it's like very practical, you know, where it's like. Well, we're, yes. we're here together, and normally we send little chats back and forth, but now if I want to say something to her, she's just on the other couch. And <laughs> I feel mm-hmm. like... <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I've, again, and Michelle's just, like, a totally chill person. So I feel like the, the mm-hmm. Capricorns that I know are chill people. They get shit done. I quite enjoy my Capricorn people. Yes. Yeah. So... This is a good season to be ambitious and get shit done. Right? I'm going to try to do that today. Tis the season. Tis the season. To be ambitious. Yeah, it la is. La 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 la, get shit done. Yeah, so if you... Yeah, so just to circle back, Capricorn, Earth sign, Cardinal sign, Feminine sign, too much of a good thing becomes bad in the case of a Capricorn. Yeah, so... so don't can, turn those positive traits into negative traits. Yeah, ambitious, but don't be a workaholic. Persistent, but don't be relentless. Realistic, but don't be pessimistic. Sensitive, but not touchy. Practical, but not too dry. And disciplined, but not too uptight. So that's the balance you need as a Capricorn. And um, Yes. And maybe the Capricorns in your life, you see that kind of both of those sides. But... Yeah, this is, it is a good season to get shit done. Kind of like how, it makes sense to me now how like, um, you know, Virgo season's the start of the school year where it's like, get things organized. And then Capricorn mm-hmm. season's the start of the new year where it's like, new year, new me, let's go. I'm going to the gym every day. <laughs> and then it's like, we become Aquarius season and it's like, oh. <laughs> but um, it is it is a good time. Like, But again, like just like we talked about in moderation. So be ambitious, but set realistic goals. Um, Mm -hmm. and yeah, so that's it for our, our Capricorn season. Well, our Capricorn season part one, we're going to have some Capricorn interviews coming your way. We're going to have some Alexander Hamilton coming your way as well. And we have other stuff planned for coming up, but I don't know. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff planned. I don't remember. We are, we are like, you know, in our Capricorn element here and planning ahead. Imagine Mm -hmm. that. Yes, and as always, if there's topics you'd like us to cover, let us know. You can find us on Instagram for the most part, but also Facebook and email all of it, the Stars Made Me podcast. Exactly. Follow us, interact with us. We have some fun uh, um, follow-ups of our episodes. Um, And rate, review, subscribe really helps us. Thank you for everybody who has. And thanks to everybody who has let us know that you've been listening too, because um, it makes us uh, it makes us pleased. So yes. we will um, we'll be back with some more Capricorn stuff for you later this Capricorn season. And um, what was the reason? And that? Happy New Year! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> 
you know what it's worth being interrupted happy freaking new year oh my god let's <laughs> let's hope let's hope that nostradamus didn't know what the fuck he was talking about for 2021 uh, i don't think he did i think nostradamus was just like tripping like all the time and just writing down really random things we're and gonna come back to this episode later. when there's <laughs> zombies in 2021 <laughs> Do we know Nostradamus's birthday? Can we look that up real quick? We can. I'm pretty sure I did this when I was watching the movie Rain. No, I mean the TV series Rain, like Mary Queen of Scots, because Nostradamus was in that. Is he like an Aquarius? He's or something? a Sag. He's a Sag. Fuck yeah. December 14. All right, we can trust a lot of it, but maybe not all. <laughs> <laughs> That he, you know what? He must have honestly believed whatever he wrote, but doesn't necessarily mean it was the truth. All right. Yes. Let's cheers to a zombie-free, famine-free, Nostradamus prediction-free 2021, where we can cheers see people again, and we'll see what the stars are going to make us all do. Yeah. And on that Alrighty. note, so. I'm not doing it again. The stars made us talk about <laughs> Capricorns. <laughs> Bye. The stars made me do it. <laughs>